I would say, you know, the doctors need to start by just listening to their patients. So many of their patients, maybe they're not aware, but many of their patients are actively using this marijuana plant to manage a variety of medical ailments. And they're, they seem to be doing that successfully, even in spite of the, the lack of support from the medical community and from the, the, you know, the lack of support from the government here. I'm a physician from Arizona and I practice internal medicine and psychiatry and I'm also, uh, a, I was a professor at the University of Arizona. I was at the College of Medicine there for almost 10 years. Unfortunately, I was the, at the forefront of some of the most controversial research at the university and eventually was fired from that medical school after years of battling the administration there to try to get this research underway. We created a political action committee called Americans for Scientific Freedom. This was also something the university was deeply concerned about. So in the U.S., we have more military veterans who die by suicide than die in active duty. It's um, unbelievable. We don't know how to treat post-traumatic stress disorder in the U.S. Here is a great illustration, right? One of our veterans painted this, and I just thought this depicts better than anything else I've seen what our veteran, our military veterans are dealing with, right? They're drowning in pill bottles and pills, and they, they barely even can, um, you know, lift their head up. They're so... Um, you know, they're so non-functional, and suddenly they discover marijuana, as, as, and it saves their life. That's what they keep reporting. How can we ignore this mountain of anecdotal evidence? That's why our study is so essential, because it's the first and only randomized controlled trial in the world looking at whole plant marijuana for PTSD. You know, that this really has a biological basis. This isn't just, you know, stoners that are drug seeking. There's real science. There's real, our ethical obligation as physicians says that, you know, as doctors, we are required to not just obey the law, but to change the law, to work, to reform laws that are not in the best interest of our patients. And I would argue that, you know, criminalizing use of medical marijuana is a, a bad law and needs to be changed. We're looking at 76 military veterans that have treatment resistant post-traumatic stress disorder. So these are veterans who've already failed medication or therapy and they're now looking to try cannabis as a treatment. If the government there is, is questioning that there's not enough studies, um, there's a, a reason why the government has systematically blocked this work for many decades. But luckily we ended up with our own institute, so now we're happily independent. So this is what scientists call this the golden ticket. It allows me the privilege of purchasing cannabis from the federal government. But this is how they standardize the cannabis. They take different strains and they blend them into this powder. Um, and this is what we're forced to work with. So this is the only federally legal supply of marijuana for any of these controlled trials. So especially wanted to point out the, need, the idea of cannabis for opioid addiction, right? So that's something that we're currently designing a clinical trial to study cannabis as a substitution for, for pain pills, for heroin. Um, it also mentions alcoholism, that it could be a substitution therapy for alcoholics. We lose um, a person to prescription drug overdose every 19 minutes, somebody dies from this. So in, in the veteran community, among our military veterans, they have a 33% higher rate of prescription <coughs> drug overdose, partly because we give them so many pills to use, that in states where medical marijuana is legally available, the patients are choosing that as a safer alternative to all the opioids and other things that can kill them. One of our colleagues followed 80 veterans through the New Mexico medical cannabis program, and they found 
a 75% reduction in PTSD symptoms using just cannabis alone. When I came back from war, I was in a really bad place in my head. Uh, I almost took my life a couple of years after the war there. A lot of these medications, uh, psych meds, uh, having the symptoms listed as suicide being one of the most detrimental symptoms. So pretty awful when you're trying to come out of a depressive state and the, the medications you're taking list suicide as a potential harmful side effect. I started to use marijuana and I was very successful in being able to stop drinking alcohol to this day. And uh, I attribute that to cannabis. Uh, I was also able to get a full night's sleep and lo and behold, I was then over the next few years, able to come off of all of those 13 different medications. And today I don't drink and I am not on any prescription pills. So I'm very passionate about this plant. So the study is currently enrolling veterans. We have about 50, 50 more veterans to go before we can, um, can finalize the study and publish the data. So we're about probably two years away from having published data on this issue, but I, I really look forward to, to, to sharing that with you.